Alderman will introduce his teen curfew bill. This comes after continued violence across the entire city. And our Mercedes McKay is joining us now with the violent threat the Alderman actually received just hours ago. Mercedes, what's this about? Good morning, Rennie and Michelle. St. Louis Alderman Brandon Bosley is set to introduce his teen curfew bill at City Hall at 10 this morning. He says shortly before 11 yesterday morning, someone called City Hall and made a disturbing threat directed at his Ward Ward 3. He says the threat did not scare him, but actually pushed him to spread the word about his curfew bill to his residents, the public, and police. Alderman Bosley says the threat was bold and it came from a man. He says a city worker took the phone call, adding that the caller said he'll, quote, burn down places in your ward if you put a curfew out and then hung up. Alderman Bosley reported the call to the police and told Five on Your Side. He hopes police can... You know what? A piece of me doesn't mind that because if I live in this place, right, and I'm not a sun team or sun man, it's I'm pissed off to the high heavens that I got to be in a fucking house early because of the activities of fucking sun sunmen. It was well, probably I, a white guy so or a tiger or right. somebody like that. We're all in this together, I tell. It's, it's so fucked up that every day they put a curfew on everybody. No, can you imagine they didn't, they didn't throw cheese? Can you can you picture? Yeah, there's that? no there's no way they can do that, but still it's just it's still fucked up. It's still everyone has to suffer and, and I can understand some people being pissed. Like, wait a second, you mean I gotta be in the fucking house at fucking ten o'clock now? What the fuck I do? As the threat did not scare him, but it actually pushed him to spread the word about his curfew bill to his residents, the public, and police. Alderman Bosley says the threat was bold and it came from a man. He says a city worker took the phone call, adding that the caller said he'll, quote, burn down places in your ward if you put a curfew out and then hung up. Alderman Bosley reported the call to the police and told Five on Your Side he hopes police can catch this individual because that's, quote, terroristic in nature. Despite the threat, he still plans to introduce a team curfew bill later this morning in hopes of curbing gun violence, particularly among teens. The most important thing is ensuring that our children understand. Oh, this guy again? Oh, this <laughs> fucking clown. Yep. This the guy Mr. from Ho last night? Yeah, this is yeah. Mr. Hostroll. <laughs> He's a true N-word. <laughs> That's a fact. Yo, he know how to keep his name. This is this is like a month ago, though. I just wanted to show y'all that, like, that curfews are, like, literally the only solution right now where we're coming on curfews were a summertime thing throughout all my life every metropolitan area put the 10 sun teams on curfew during the summertime because they're out of school and then you know once summer was over once they went back to school it was that it was over you didn't hear no more curfew talk to the next summer they're starting to do this shit in the winter now which is fucking it, like it's just insane they never did this before it speaks to the most the important decline thing is ensuring parents. that our children understand huh it speaks to the decline of parents nah it speaks to the fucking emboldenment of kids but the most important thing is ensuring that our children understand that we are trying to figure out the best way to get them in a particular place where we know they can grow in this city and not put themselves in harm's way Historically, no matter how you twist the turn, any teenagers generally that are outside getting hurt, being shot or shooting, it's after 12 o'clock at night. It's at one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. Alderman Bosley's citywide proposal would also include creating a curfew center where there's a gym, kitchen and other resources for kids. Wouldn't be right without giving them what? free stuff. Oh, yep. <laughs> yep. Now, now we got midnight home ec. A curfew center? Like, now we got midnight real? home ec and basketball. Yeah. Listen, man, you have to include free stuff. If you don't got free stuff, man, we can't do like it. No that business. sounds crazy. Uh, a curfew <laughs> center? What that mean? They don't have nowhere to go? It means that, like, basically, if you break curfew, instead of fucking punishing you, we're going to bring you somewhere. Oh, then they take curfew. you to the gym and let you um, play? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Can, can I still have my gun on me, though? Is that okay? <laughs> Trust yeah, and believe. They, <laughs> they got their yeah, guns out. They got their guns the on them. <laughs> they got metal detectors at the curfew. <laughs> they will do anything but lock them up. Anything.
anything but hold and, them accountable and the parents and, accountable. Exactly. And none of these curfews are going to work unless they have real teeth. And this, right. uh, this, this is the teeth. Alderman Bosley's citywide proposal would also include creating a curfew center where there's a gym, kitchen, and other resources for kids. Coming up in the next half hour, what else his bill entails? Michelle? City council member calling for a let, let me guess. mandatory curfew. Let me guess. He owns a building that would be perfect for that curfew center. And it just happens to be empty right now, ready for a new lease. Oh, and his God. uncle owns a construction company that could modify the building to fit every need. And a government contract is to follow. Yep. yep. And get the money from defunding for, police. Citywide. Yeah, um, reallocated um, funds. City council member calling for a citywide mandatory curfew. And it's in response to the killing of this child near Atlantic Station. This is Zion Charles. The 12-year-old was killed and five others were shot Saturday night at the 17th Street Bridge. Today, his mother spoke through tears in front of Atlanta's public safety committee. This is Atlanta. Safety committee. My son is gone. I don't have no son no more. Oh, he's gone. And I cried out for help. I cried out for it, y'all. My son is gone. And he... That child does not look like 12 years old. Oof. What was your 12-year-old doing 12. out? Nah, he, he looks, yeah, he looks, he looks, he looks, looks like a hard 12, but he's yeah, he hard. That's why. Exactly, exactly. She's right. He's hard. That's why he don't Very look hard. Me. He looks 12 to me. He's Oof. hard, though. Oof. That's, and she got the ass to be up there crying like that. She she cried out for help with what? I couldn't what tell if she was speaking English. Miss Bird, what do, you, what do y'all sisters mean when you talk about crying out for help? <laughs> I I I can't answer that. I have no. Well, I, you know what I did when I cried out for help? I went to Google, and I looked for um, a what do you call it? Like a a mentorship yeah. program. I googled rite of passage, and I found a program. And my son was involved in that program for four years. Like when he turned fourteen, he started. You know, his balls was coming down. They, he was just, you know, bucking. Yeah. But I put him in that program, and they straightened his behind right on out. And it's been an excellent program. He actually um, got his rite of passage tonight. So, oh, wow. Congratulations. Are you a single mom, Miss Bird? Yes. Okay. Now, um, the men at the, um, at the program... Um, t- tell us about these men. Are they are, are they are they they're like working men or people? Yes. The yeah, they they work regular jobs and then they dedicate their time after work to you know just guiding these boys. But they met. They would meet like once a week every Wednesday night or Wednesday evening, and then on Saturdays they had to be at the garden at eight o'clock in the morning. And, you know, basically tilling the land. So how did your son get to the meetings? I drove him there. I take him there. See, I, that's the thing. She she actually made the effort to do that. Yeah, it wasn't easy. I'll tell you that. Most uh, most morning, most do not. <laughs> so tell me this. Tell me this. Do, do the men who do these jobs, do they get paid for this? They volunteer. This is an yeah. unpaid uh, situation. They don't get paid for it. No. And but it's, many, a, um, it's a 501c3, so uh, they do accept donations, I guess, but no, they don't get paid for their time. So about how much, how many brothers, how many dudes are in the, um, how many people are in the program, young men? Are the in young the- men? Um, tonight's count, I believe it was like 16 or 18, I believe. It's less than 20. Okay, so they so okay, so so yeah, man. Salute to those brothers, man. Send me send me the information for the thing, man. I put it up so that you know if somebody want to donate to it. Yeah, man. it's called the Mail's Place. Yeah, yeah the Mail's um, Place dot org. I'll send you the information. Mail's Place dot org. Because I I love the brother. I grew I grew up in programs like this, man. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 these programs, um, were very pivotal to you know. 
me being, you know, the man yeah. I am and, you know. So they I'll show be- them something different. It's an agricultural program. So they, they do a lot of farming. Um, they went to Cuba and did some work there. They, you know, they take trips. They go out of the country. It's, it's very, I love it. I love that program. Yeah, put the link in the back chat. Yeah, but that, that's that's because that, it's brother. It is brothers in the community trying to do what they can for fucking free, taking care of these single moms like Miss Barry, and we're not here to this single mom, but they're taking care of these single moms' kids after they get off a long day's fucking work, right? And on the fucking weekends after early a long in the morning. week of work, early in the morning. <laughs> So salute to these brothers, man, that are doing this shit, man. Like, my God. Um, man. Salute. Salute. And salute to the, to the mothers who actually responses. take their children to get, you know, what they need. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's killing necessary. Of this ch- yeah. child near Atlantic Station. This is Zion Charles. The 12-year-old was killed, and five others were shot Saturday night at the 17th Street Bridge. Today, his mother spoke through tears in front of Atlanta's Public Safety Committee. My son is gone. I don't have no son no more. Oh, he's gone, and I cried out for help. I cried out for y'all. Atlanta News First, Chelsea Bynford joining us live outside City Hall. And Chelsea, you spoke with the councilwoman who's proposing this curfew. Guys, Keisha Sean Waits pro- drafted this proposal today after a violent weekend in Atlanta, and she says although it's likely not a permanent solution, this could at least help cut down on crime quickly. Help these young boys while they still got a chance, because I don't have a chance no more. <laughs> I don't. Tonight, the mother of 12-year-old Zion Charles begging Atlanta city leaders to do something after her son was gunned down near Atlantic Station Saturday night. The system has failed us again. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! <laughs> Jesus, that's, man, that's evil to say that to put that yeah. on the system and not yourself. Why is he even out? That's exactly. evil. That's pure exactly. evil. It's, it's everybody else's fault. Everybody else's effing fault. That's what she meant when she said she was crying out for help. She. This is like the mom of that kid who killed that country star. Remember? Um, Kyle yep. Yolix. Yep. Yeah. Like his mom. Yep. Y'all kept releasing them. <laughs> yeah. You, you, I kept begging y'all to lock them up, but y'all kept letting them up. Yeah. This, this shit. Oh my God, man. It's so oh. fucking. That's well, the government is her husband, though. Yeah, definitely. And the parent. system is. Yeah, her the system daddy, is her husband. Her sugar daddy, you telling me? Yep. And mother and father. Yep. Saturday bitch. night. The system has failed us again. Atlanta City Councilwoman Keisha Sean Waite says she has a temporary fix to the uptick in youth gun violence, a 7 p.m. curfew for kids under 17. There is no reason why our young people should be out unsupervised. For the record, we have a, a curfew in place, right? It's 11 p.m. for indiv- individuals under the age of 16. This particular measure that I am calling for is actually going to change it to 7 p.m. Wait- Seven. Think about if you're a fucking tiger who's got straight A's and, you know, involved in all types of activities at the fucking school, and all you want to do is fucking, you know, I mean, like, hang out at the mall after school some days, or just have the freedom, the option to leave the house after seven. Now that's fucking not going to be fucking an option for you. Oh, it, this is what she's proposing. It'll never work. No, I get it. But what I'm saying is you they're know. not going to see a fucking tiger, a 14-year-old tiger fucking out at 715 and not be like, hey, well, you know, th- they can't. Like, right, could you right. imagine if it was a group of fucking teenage tigers just hanging with, out at the with, mall after seven o'clock with, with the, the standos and the switches no but and the cops didn't do anything would you imagine how many black people would have cared but look let oh me my god me. Look these. They out and nobody doing nothing. Oh, and the, the lack of the lack of self-awareness chief man <laughs> it, after 7 p.m a group of tigers would be practicing math club yeah 
But if what if they were going to math club, <laughs> walking to math club, and some sudden people saw like a cop near them, and the cop wasn't fucking with them? Oh, that That's would be an people. Asian street gang. <laughs> you would be no. all over fucking social media. Man, this ain't the movies, man. Yo. <laughs> well, my curfew was ten o'clock until I went to college. Yeah, man, that's a good time. Especially and who enforced that? My mother was not having it, but she Thank was you. a corrections officer at Rikers. It doesn't like, matter if the parents were just more accountable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, man, I mean, I used to think it all the time. You know, kid. I mean, I'm not trying to defend it, but kids are dumb, right? Yeah, kids. They, they, they suck. Kids. But but if you can just keep it, it the fact that you got to keep these kids off of the street after seven, just the thought of it. I know this ain't gonna pass. And what you do when you're sneaking out is you're yep. trying not to get caught. Yep. These kids don't care, and they're walking out the front door no, because there's no yet. restrictions. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. No, That's what I was gonna say. Wicked, you snuck out because you knew if you're, I don't know if it was two parent or one parent, whatever, right. whichever one it was, you knew there were rules. You yeah. knew that if you got caught doing it, you were going to get in trouble, so you had to sneak out. To right. Mayo's point, you didn't just get to walk right. out the effing front door and be like, hey, I see you when I see you. Right. Not only that, I, but, you know, there was an element of respect, believe it or not, you know? Right. Well, it's, it's fear of getting caught. Yes. It, it's fear, fear of facing the consequences. These ding, kids ding, have, ding. do not have the, that fear of, of consequences. Yep. No, not being held accountable for anything. Here. They could just leave whenever they feel like it. Nope. Yeah, because the parents getting their party on smoke on high on. Exactly. And exactly. On they, they might be kicking them out I, themselves, T. They might be the ones sending them the fuck yep. off. I promise you. Yeah, definitely. But here's the thing, though. If you if you if you're a kid like these kids that you're talking about, they didn't even go home after school. So it's no walking out the front door. Their parents haven't seen them in days, type shit. You dig what I'm saying? Oh uh, yeah. Kids, you know? Oh yeah, they probably didn't even go to school. Yeah, they didn't go to school, but they didn't come home and then leave. Yeah. They fucking just been out all the whole time. It's, it's right. It's, it's, I think that's what the deal was with that little boy, the the twelve year old. Yeah. I'm just saying there's there's no there's no sense of structure. There's no sense of discipline. There's no sense of there's a the ground rules that you have to follow. And if there's no ground rules at the home, then that child is gonna go out into society with that same mentality. Oh, I can do whatever I want, and there's gonna not gonna be any consequences. And as we know, eventually consequences will catch up and then the mother is on the um television crying hooping and hollering talking about the system failed her you can't make it up you can't make wait says the curfew would not apply to teens who are out working at a job and chaperones could still escort teens to public places like malls and movie theaters after 7 p.m but wait says it will take more than just an enforced curfew to fix the problem this is really a social issue she thinks the violence in Atlanta is a result of unmet needs, including a lack of affordable housing, inadequate access oh my God. to mental health services, serious? and low-paying wages. There's, everything she said, there's a lack of, there's plenty of. And, and it's going into fucking white, uh, white neighborhoods now. Everything she said is not only in the hood, it's in the fucking suburbs now. Salute to Deluxe 247, a.k.a. the real MVP, a.k.a. AKA Cal Rookie, man. Salute to you, bro. Result of unmet needs, including a lack of affordable housing, inadequate access to mental health services, and low paying wages. All things that will require more conversations and more action from city leaders and the community. We are asking I eat more money. Community, the entire city to come together and to protect our young people. And we believe right now, at least I believe, that a 7 p.m. curfew right now until we can find some other solutions is the answer. Now, Waits drafted the proposal today. She plans to formally introduce it to the full city council next week. Reporting live in downtown Atlanta, Chelsea Bime for Atlanta News First. So poor Zion, Zion got shot because he couldn't city city afford a house. The bill. This <laughs> Yo, Chief, real quick. I don't know if you heard, but uh, the project didn't get pushed through. A judge ruled it unconstitutional. So that fat prick 
governor and that and Kwame could go fuck themselves. Oh, that's <laughs> great. That is that is the best news I've heard all day. But yeah. he said they're gonna fight it though. Kwame Raul said they're gonna fight it. Wow. Wow. But well, that is great news, man. At least at least the people get some reprieve. Good evening, yeah, everyone. I'm Yuki Washington. Philadelphia City Council passed a bill this afternoon cracking down on curfews in the city. Eyewitness News reporter Alicia Roberts spoke with the councilwoman behind the effort as critics argue it's putting police in a difficult spot. The councilwoman who created this bill is a mother herself. She tells me her goal is to help protect young people who all too often fall victim to our city's violence. There are too many young people who have been involved in crime or criminal incidents simply because they have been out late at night. On Thursday, Philadelphia City Council passed a bill requiring anyone 17 years old and younger to be home by 10 p.m. There are a few exceptions, including if the teen is with a parent or going to and from work. Councilwoman Catherine Gilmore Richardson created the legislation and says its aim is preventative versus punitive. When a kid gets picked up for violating curfew, the first step is to try to reunify unify them with their family. If that's unable to happen, then we'll take them to a community evening resource center if they're close. If not... <sighs> community centers... Only works if you lock them in. The police. Yeah, this, this, this is a problem. And search them on the way in. This is a huge problem. Versus punitive. When a kid gets picked up for violating curfew, the first step is to try to reunify them with their family. If that's unable to happen, then we'll take them to a community evening resource center if they're close. If not, they go to the police district. The bill includes expanded curfew hours, which will stay open through 2 a.m., and reporting from Philadelphia police on its enforcement. A young person could show their ID. Not many young people have an ID card, so maybe they have a school ID card. We can't just stop anybody for any reason anymore. How are we going to determine a 15-year-old from a 20-year-old or a 20-year-old that looks 15? But retire That's true. Great point. Great point. So it's going to be systemic racism. Yeah, you can't just stop anybody. Like, think about if you run up on a fucking Sunday. Think about if you run up on a thousand Sunmen and they're all teenagers. And one of them, that one thousand and one, first one is fucking 19. He turned 19 fucking two days ago. Well, you're and how many Sunmen look yeah. 20 when they're 15? But you're fucking going to have the camera phone on. He's going to be cussing out the cop. Oh, yeah, these bitch ass men look. Hey, y'all, man, they, they bitch ass. They, look at they, they fucking with niggas. This is how they do black people. And then you have a bunch of mammies online sharing it on the shade room and shit. And then it's going to be a fucking big fucking deal that they going out here harassing black adults and shit. And every black person is just being it's harassed. It's no different than checking people. IDs at a bar to make sure you're of age to serve you alcohol. You just can't do it, man. You just so it turns into stop and frisk. Exactly. Exactly what they're gonna try to act like it is. That's exactly what they're gonna do. And 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 they're gonna do it, and it's not gonna be like a bunch of them. It'll just be one. And then it'll, it'll, be, it'll be one 18 year old and two hundred seven seventeen and unders that get checked. Right. But the yeah. entire focus will be on that the violation of that one 18 year old's rights. Yep. And this dude right here will get hit upside the head walking down the street. A 15-year-old from a 20-year-old or a 20-year-old that looks 15. But retired Philadelphia Warrant Unit Sergeant Mark Fusetti argues given police staffing issues and added security in recent years, officers worry this measure puts even more risk on their shoulders. Well, officers oh. are going to hesitate because this is another chance for them to get in trouble. The bill still needs to be approved by <laughs> Mayor Jim Kennedy. He said this is another chance for them to get in trouble. I'm glad he said that. That was, yo, know, salute to this guy, man. It's just another chance for them to get in trouble. Think about that. Being a cop and dealing with the sun community, you just look at it as like, I'm, like, yo, I'm about to get in trouble. Let me... If I if I fucking do my job, I could possibly be fucking facing a murder charge, be in the hospital, be <laughs> dead, be fucking facing the civil rights, the fucking FBI DOJ on my ass. It's fucking crazy. Hey, 
That is I could get I could get shot and still go to prison for it. Jesus, you sad, dude. <laughs> for a fact. Even more risk on their shoulders. Well, officers are going to be are going to hesitate because this is another chance for them to get in trouble. The bill still needs to be approved by Mayor Jim Kenney. His office tells me they are currently reviewing it. In Spring Garden, Alicia Ross.